Hello. So we can continue with our thermal energy related topic, but now we're going to talk about the energy that you need to phase change. So for example, from solid to liquid, how much energy do you need if you want to change? Uh, so let's say you want to melt a kilogram of ice. So how much energy does that need? Or if you want to boil uh, five liters of, uh, let's say, mercury, you want to boil the mercury so it becomes mercury gas, how much energy do you need? Now, in physics, there is a specific name for that. It's called latent heat. Okay, so latent heat is the amount of energy that is required uh, for you uh, to change the temperature, uh, to change the phase of an object. So to change it from solid to liquid and liquid to gas. Now, those are going to be, those numbers are going to be experimentally determined and so we have a table okay so we have a table on the formula sheet so if you don't have the formula sheet with you i would like you to take out your formula sheets right now because you actually need to make some adjustment to it so on your formula sheet links to the table with the specific capacity you should see a table for the latent heat now on that list you will have the numbers Okay, I know this looks a little bit different from your notes. This is actually what the formula sheet version looks like exactly. So just go to your formula sheet and you will see that table. Okay, so on your formula sheet, now you see we have all these substance on the left hand side. Hydrogen, oxygen, water is right here. Water is very commonly used. And then we have a melting point and boiling point. As you can see, now melting point is the temperature that it will start melting. So for example, if you have a solid water, which is ice, then you want to melt it, it will start melting at zero degrees Celsius. Now, how much energy do you need to melt a kilogram of water? So we count it by kilogram. So if you have two kilograms of water, then you need to double that amount. So now look at this number. It says 334. Now, what does that mean? Oh, so does that mean 344 joules of energy to melt one kilogram of water? Now, unfortunately, these numbers are put in here if you look at the topic units on the top, right? So look at the units on the top. Kilojoules per kilogram, not joules per kilogram. Look at this uh, value at the top. Now that means all of these numbers that you see in here is actually in kilojoules. That means it's in thousands of joules. So this is not 334. This is 334,000 joules of energy per kilogram of water. Now, all of these numbers in here have the same problem. They all, they all have to be multiplied by a thousand before you can actually use it in any calculation. So on top of, now on your formula sheet, you're on your formula sheet right now, right? So take it out. I want you to write down multiply by a thousand on the top, over here and over there. So multiply by a thousand, multiply by a thousand, so to remind yourself that all of these numbers have to be multiplied by a thousand. Okay, so for example, if you look at lead, so let's say you have some lead that's already in liquid form. And so you go lead, liquid form, so you need to boiling. So boiling is, so the first, well, there's two columns in here, right? So melting leads, so for example, let's go back to water. I'm jumping ahead of myself. So for melting, what that means, so let's say you have ice, you want to melt it into water, then you need 334,000 joules of energy per kilogram of water that you're melting. Now then, what if you want to boil water? Because once you have ice turning into water, then you can also boil the water into steam, right? So boiling is this set of number, it's the next two column. So boiling temperature, water temperature boiling is 100 degrees Celsius, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And how much energy does that need? 2,256 joules? No, no, no. It's 2,256 thousand joules. So that's actually, that's 2 million, right? 2 million joules of energy to boil one kilogram of water into steam. Okay, so that's how you use this table. So on the left column, so there are actually two side-by-side uh, -side columns in here. So the temperature to melt something and the energy required to melt it, and then you have a, a temperature needed to boil something. Uh, so the temperature you need to actually start boiling something, which is right here, and the energy you need to boil it, okay? Now, so different material are going to have different melting and boiling point. So the equation, so we have two new equations. Now then, 
Uh, so this is called latent heat, which is the energy needed to melt or boil something. So there are two versions, and the two both equations are extremely easy. It's the mass of the object, which is how much you want to melt or boil, multiplied by the latent heat number. So the latent heat number is the number that you just saw over here on this table. That's the latent heat number. That's the L. Latent heat, right? So we use L. So mass of the substance that you want to melt or boil multiplied by the latent heat volume. That's it. Q equal to the energy required equal to those two numbers combined. Because the latent heat volume is measured per kilogram. So if you have 16 kilograms, just multiply that number by 16. Okay, so now let's look at uh, this. So the energy needed. So there are two numbers. Why do we have the little f and little you know v on these value? Uh, so what are they? Uh, so that's just naming. That's just naming. So for example, uh, the heat that you need to melt the substance, which means it's changing it from solid to liquid, is called the heat of fusion. Okay, it's called latent heat of fusion. So that is the number LF, which is the value that is here, this value here. Okay, latent heat of fusion. So that's how much energy you need to melt something. Okay, melt something, changing it from solid to liquid. Then we have the lick set, which is the heat energy required to vaporize. Vaporize meaning changing it from gas to liquid. Uh, sorry, liquid to gas. It's called the latent heat of vaporization. That's why the term, uh, the, the symbol for that has an L with a V. So latent heat of vaporization. So vaporization. So these numbers in here. Okay, so how much energy do you need to vaporize something? That means changing it from gas to to uh, liquid to gas. Okay, so now at this point we actually have three equations then uh, for this thermal energy, heat energy chap uh, uh, topic. So right, we have this Q equal to m c delta t, which we learned last week. Now, so this remember is for uh, temperature change, right? This one is for temperature change. So this one is for temperature change. So when you have a substance that's changing temperature only, so not changing phase, not changing from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, but just changing temperature, then this is the amount of energy that you need. And you need this value called specific capacity, which is from the formula sheet. And now today we have two new, two new one. So the energy that you need to melt something is the heat of fusion. So heat of fusion. So this is a number that you need to look up from the table. And this is for phase change. So both of these are for phase change. So this is for phase change. So the first one is for changing solid to liquid. Okay. And then we have, so that's for this one, changing from solid to liquid. And then we have uh, this one. So vaporization. So now this is the third one. So that's also for phase change, but this is for changing liquid to gas, right? Liquid to, to gas. Okay, so we have these two equations. So now why do we care about this? So we look at uh, a couple, uh, one example, let's say with water, right? So remember, last day, we kind of look at this hitting curve of water. So let's say I want to do one example which is how much energy does it lead? So the example is a block of ice at negative 40 degrees Celsius is heated to 80 degrees Celsius. How much energy do you need in total for that to happen? Now at the beginning, you might say, oh, MC delta T, the temperature is changing. But be careful. Be very, very careful about this. Now, this is water. So let's look at the chart. This is the ice at negative 40 degrees Celsius. Right, so negative 40 degrees Celsius ice. Now, at the beginning, we're gonna have this temperature change section, right? So we're gonna have this temperature change. So the ice rises in temperature as we heat it up, right? And it goes to zero. Then what? Then it start melting. Then it start melting. But okay, so the first section in there, we need change in temperature, right? So the blue, the light blue section in here is change in temperature. So now. So if we want to, if we are changing temperature, then we're supposed to use MC delta T. But then once you arrive at this point, 
So now you have zero degrees Celsius, so it's zero degrees Celsius ice, and it's going to phase change, it's going to melt, and it becomes what? It becomes zero degrees Celsius water, right? So the temperature is not increasing, but you have this like phase change. So at that point, at that point, you can no longer use MC delta T. So to find out how much energy does you, do you need to change from ice to water, you need to use the latent heat equation, which is the mass times latent heat. Now, this is melting, so heat of fusion. Then what? Then the temperature is going to change again because you're going to from 0 degrees Celsius water to 80 degrees Celsius water, which is your final destination. So you want to change it to 80 degrees Celsius water at the end. So like right here at the end, now you have 80 degrees Celsius water. So does this process involve any phase change? No, it doesn't, right? It's just temperature change. So which equation should you be using? The latent heat or is it the change in temperature equation? Of course, in this case, it's a change in temperature equation, which means, well, back to MC delta T then. Okay, MC delta T again. Now, but there's one thing in here. So you say, okay, so Mr. Chang, fine. So it's three steps. So I just have to do this in three different steps. That is true. But be very careful though. The first step, MC delta T, and the second one of those MC delta T, they don't have the same specific heat capacity. For example, remember this value, the specific capacity for water is 4,186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, right? That is only for liquid water. That is, ac there's actually a different number for ice. For ice, that number is not 4,186. Now from the formula, uh, from the formula sheet, you can see that uh, you can actually find ice. Now I have to go back, I think almost uh, two pages to find that. There you go. So we are back to the specific capacity. So liquid water was here. 4,186, right? And look at ice. Oh, ice here. See, ice is 2,090. So ice actually have a different specific heat. So this is for ice and this is for water. Okay, it's different. So therefore, while we're doing this calculation, that specific capacity for ice is 2,100 and, uh, sorry, 2,090. Uh, not 4,186, okay? Now, uh, what about the uh, specific heat for uh, the latent heat of fusion for water? Uh, that one was from the last page. So for water, and we want to melt it. So we look at this column, right? So if it's uh, water boiling to steam, then I need to look at uh, the other column. But right now, I look at this one. And for water, melting right here. 334, but the number is kilojoules, so 334,000 joules of energy. So this right here is 334,000 joules of energy, okay, per kilogram. Now that we have everything, we can actually do this. So it's a three-step process from the bottom to the top, but, you know, of course, uh, we want to start with ice because we are technically starting with ice so let's actually start with ice so the first one is going to be mc delta t but this one is for ice okay so we're starting with ice now so the not with the value is uh two kilogram uh the specific heat i just remember just got it from the other page is 2090 uh for ice and the change in temperature. Now the change in temperature should be pretty easy. You look at negative 40 to zero, right? So you're trying to get to ice. So negative 40 to the melting point, that is 40 degree, right? This is 40 degree. So now you don't have to use uh, usually unless you're doing the conservation of energy thing that we did earlier uh, from the last video. Uh, just look at the temperature different. You don't have to add negative or positive into it. So look at this from negative 40 to 40 is 40 degrees Celsius, right? 40 degrees Celsius. So there, that's it. So it's 167200 joules at the end. And then you do, so the specific heat for ice is right here. And then uh, you have a phase change. 
So you're going to do mass times the latent heat. Now this is melting, right? Ice to water is melting, so heat of fusion. And remember, so that is a number that you can find for the water. And this is a two kilogram. And then we got that number earlier, which is a three, three, four, three, three, four, but it's missing a thousand. So three, three, four thousand joules per kilogram. So if you want to heat up one kilogram, melt one kilogram of ice, you need 334,000 joules of energy. While you only, right now you have two kilograms of ice, so just double it. So 668, 668,000 joules. And then very quickly, we're finishing things this off with just one more mc delta t again so this time this specific heat right here is for water because you have finally at water is zero degree celsius water to 80 degree celsius water and the change in temperature is well zero to 80 80 right so two kilogram specific heat uh, this is 4186 so that is one that i always remember oh change in temperature 80 degrees Celsius. Why 80? Well, 0 to 80, right? So that's 80 degrees Celsius. And that is 669760 uh, joules of energy. Now, so then you, if you add all of them together, it's going to be like uh, roughly 1.5 million. So I'm going to round it off. So the total energy needed, right, is adding the three together. So you take all the steps and you add the energy together, and you, you're you gonna get roughly, right? I'm, I'm gonna put down roughly in here, roughly 150 million, uh, one, uh, 1. 1.5 million. Now this is a rough number. Uh, it's rung off with, you, you know, two sig fig or something like that. So don't worry about it. If you have a number that has more detail, that is perfectly okay. So if you boil the water, if you, uh, at home and then you actually so let's say you will have some ice and you want to melt it into water and bring it into 80 degrees celsius um consider the fact that this is how much energy uh that you need from you and then uh bc hydro will charge you for it <laughs> right so um that is this one okay so then the next example i'm just going to do uh, you know what I'm going to do? This one is very similar to, so that's water to steam. Okay, I'll do one more, and then I will end this video and do the extra two examples on a separate video. Because if I do one more and you get it, you get it, right? Um, If you need extra help, then you watch the other two. So I'm going to do one more. Okay, so now uh, uh, this one in here, is going to be how much energy okay so this time we want to look at gold now solid gold so how much energy is required to melt two kilogram of gold uh, so that it goes from like solid gold into liquid gold okay so and I think I have a typo on this one, so just wait one moment. Okay, let's cross this out. So the question is, okay, so the question is, melting a piece of solid gold at 45 degrees Celsius so that it becomes liquid gold at 1,645 degrees Celsius. Now, we have a problem with this question though. Okay, so the problem is the specific heat capacity for gold listed on the chart that you have is for solid gold. Now liquid gold absorb heat differently than solid gold. But because we usually have solid gold, eh? not I don't think any one of you has to ever dealt with liquid gold. So that's why those are not very common material that we don't list it on the table with our formula sheet. But of course that number is there. So I will have to tell you about this number. So let's go back to the formula sheet. And you can see from the latent, uh, from the one with the thermal energy. And there you go. Now, so you see this number for gold. Let's find gold first. Uh, gold is right here. Okay, so this is gold. So this is the specific heat for gold. Now, this value right here is for solid gold. Okay, 
So if you want to change temperature with solid gold, it takes 129 uh, joules per degree Celsius per kilogram. But then if the gold is liquid, okay, so if it's already liquid gold and then the change in temperature for liquid gold, the specific heat, the specific heat is slightly higher. It's about 150 uh, joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Okay, so that's the difference. So for solid and liquid. So we will leave both of these water because we are, we're starting with solid gold and we are melting it into liquid. Okay, so let's go very quickly do that example and then we'll end this video. Okay, so how much heat energy is required for you to actually do this? So there's, uh, so first we need to look up the melting point. Uh, so when will go actually melt? So from this table, so we have written a lot of stuff on it. So now let's see. So where's gold? Okay, so we want to look at gold. Uh, right, right here. Gold is uh, there. So with gold, we have melting point 1063 degrees Celsius. Okay, so 1063 degrees Celsius. And to melt it, you need 64.5 thousand. So you multiply by a thousand joules per kilogram. Okay, remember this number has to be multiplied by 1,000. Okay, but 1,063. Okay, so 1,063. All right, so now, let's see. Okay, so now the melting point. Okay, so melting point. Melting point for gold is 1,063 degrees Celsius. Now, why do we need to know this number? Because we are starting with a piece of gold that has 45 degrees Celsius. So we need to actually do these three steps, right? So we need to take the gold uh, so that it changes from solid to liquid, uh, from 45 degrees Celsius to that melting point. So we'll have like solid. Okay, so the, the three steps should be solid at uh, 45 degrees Celsius to still solid 1063 degrees Celsius that would be the first step right and then the second step is going to be uh, melting right so it's going to be melting and then the first step so then you have melting and then the first step is going to be liquid uh, go from 1,063 degrees Celsius to 1,645 degrees Celsius. Okay, so those are our three steps, right? So from so from the solid 40 degrees Celsius to the melting point, 1,063, and then at the melting point, melt. So that takes energy. And then once you get all the solid go into liquid go, then brings its temperature to the desired value. Okay, so first part is changing temperature. So that is going to be MC delta T, right? So the heat is going to be MC delta T. Now, so in this case, uh, it's going to be, so how about two kilogram of gold, uh, C is specific heat capacity. So for liquid, so now I have all those number on the formula sheets, right? So for solid gold is 129 joules and then the change in temperature. Okay, so what's the change in temperature? Now, in this case, it's 45 going to 1,063. So 1,063 minus 45, uh, 45 in this case. So that is going to be 1,022, right? No, actually, no. That is going to be 1,000, and so if you subtract by 43, then you get 1,018, yeah. 1,018 degrees Celsius. That's your change in temperature, okay? So you get a value. Now, and then the next step is melting. So melting, melting is mass times heat of fusion. And that is from the formula sheet too. But now you have to look at the latent heat value for gold, for melting gold. So remember, uh, so earlier we saw that value, it was 60 something, 64.5, I believe. So I'll put 64.5 in here. 
so 64.5. But remember, this number is supposed to be multiplied by a thousand before you can use it. So there, you get another value. Now, so the final step is another change in temperature, mc delta t again, but this time you have liquid, right? So before you have solid. So this is for solid gold, specific heat value. But now you have liquid gold, so liquid gold specific value. So that's the one that I wrote down as an extra. So it's 150 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And the change in temperature. So that is 1000, so I'll just write it down in here. So 1645 minus 1063, whatever that is, right? So that's our change in temperature. So now you do all three and you add them together. So again, I'm going to use, like the number is going to be really big. So I'm going to use um, scientific notation. It's roughly uh, 500,000 ish, close to 600,000. So I'll just say 500,000, 570,000. Uh, now, this is a rounded number, okay? So the total energy. So the total, total is about 570,000 joules. Again, it's a rounded value, okay? So it's a rounded value. So I round it after like two seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna end the video right here. The next two example, question two and three, will be on a separate video. So if you need extra help, uh, then you can watch those two. Uh, otherwise, you can go ahead and then uh, go ahead and try the homework, try the questions on the extra worksheet, which is also attached to the post on our my website. And uh, that's it for this week. Goodbye.